Hey guys, Brian Davis here. Super excited to be with you today, as always. And I'm pumped to have Eric Martell with us. Eric is the founder of Martell Turnkey and Flip System. He's been investing for over a decade. Eric, thank you so much for joining us today. Well, my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, with, with most of our guests here on the show, we typically ask to go back to the very beginning to rewind the clock, how you got started in real estate, and then we can, you know, we can talk about your journey from there. So yeah, take us back to the very beginning. How did you get into real estate in the first place? Well, the very beginning, if we want to turn up the clock all the way back, uh, all the had, way back, I, I had my own rich dad, poor dad moment. <laughs> uh, my parents were nine to fivers. My father was working at a factory. We were lower middle class and, uh, you know, living paycheck to paycheck and all that kind of stuff. I went to university and I met a real estate investor and I said, you know, oh, well, you know, you should, he kept talking to me about real estate investing and stuff like that. So how can I do that? And he ended up coaching me uh, on real estate investing. And I bought my first eight unit apartment building uh, with no money down because I had I had no money. Um, and um, that that was the beginning of that. My my journey and my mindset is the I realized my ability to actually invest in real estate and uh, make money you know, from real estate without having to to work necessarily nine to five. And so that was my my rich dad, poor dad moment. Um, well, that, before, before you go any further, let me just pause you uh, because I'm sure people would be curious to know, how did you buy that eight unit apartment building with no money down? Well, it was a lot of work. Um, you know, I <laughs> had sure. like 400, over 400 properties, you know, and uh, in those days there was no MLS uh, online. So there, uh, my realtor was uh, that was working with me was uh, kind of like trying to whoosh push me away and stuff like that. And he thought that by giving me four binders of printouts of MLS printouts of properties for sale, that it would deter me. But uh, instead I just uh, put my calculator, started to do some kind of like rule of thumbs, similar to the 1% rule. And I was able to quickly sift through these four or 500 uh, MLS listing came up with about four or five that, made sense or were close and uh out of those one then only one then one uh, seller was willing to do a partial um uh, seller financing basically 20 gotcha. percent seller financing all i had to do then was to find the 80 percent mortgage right Gotcha. Okay, so you you actually have much more than a decade of real estate experience, is, is what I'm seeing here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. But the real yeah. way that where I really I turned this into a business was really ten years ago. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. All right. So you you bought this this eight unit apartment building as a young man. Tell us about how you scaled up from there. Well, so that my big problem then is that I had no money, and then I noticed that how hard it was for me to to really kind of like get this deal together. And I thought, okay, well, I need more money. And um, so I, I missed some opportunities there now that I'm looking back. I mean, I should have talked to other investors and said, hey, you know, what if I was to help you find other deals and stuff like that? What if I was able to help you manage project and stuff like that? Would you cut me into some deals or, or stuff sure, like that? So I didn't have that. Ventures, partnerships, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And my mentor didn't have he never did that, so he couldn't help me uh, do what I wanted uh, or what I because I didn't know it existed. He didn't know it existed either. Um, so, so you have to be careful when you select a, a mentor. Is that you know you, they have some limit limitations about what they know. They can really fast forward and help you propel what you're trying to do, but you know they don't know everything about about everything. You know, so sure. you have to. You have to understand where where their uh, their forte is, where their strengths are, and also kind of like where where their weakness. And this should be a good mentor would actually tell you that they would actually tell you that you know what this is like. If you want to do like uh, you know a medical building, uh, I don't I don't do medical building. You have to find someone else to do that. So right. that's the kind of mentor. So I was not too clear on that at the beginning, and um, so I missed a couple of opportunities. But what I saw is that it was a lot of work to find that deal with no money down. So 
obviously, like everybody else, my thought was, well, I need more money. So I started getting a job and uh, so I started working uh, as an actuary, which is the uh, mathematics of uh, financial risk. So I was working for insurance companies and all that kind of stuff and pension plans. And um, so that's kind of, that was kind of my, my journey. So worked and worked and worked and uh, tried to buy rental properties in every city that I was in. But it was, uh, it was not as easy. You know, when you live in a big city, it's hard to find some good deals that are properties that are going to cash flow. Oh, yeah. And, um, so absolutely. You know, so it took a while. It took basically until like 2000 and what, 15 or something like that, where we were, uh, I was able to, the technology was there. Even when I, I was in San Francisco, I moved to San Francisco in 2000. I had tons of stock options, tons of money, and I wanted to look at the real estate investing. And uh, it didn't make sense. Like I had, I literally had millions of dollars in stock options and I was looking for deals and it was just like, well, you know, that I could make them cash flow, but if I, I have to put so much money in that, uh, you know, my return on investment was like 1%. So I decided I'm just going to leave it in the, in the stock market. And uh, yeah. 2000, 2001, I don't know if you remember, but you know, dot com crash. So I had to see, say goodbye to all these uh, millions of dollars in, uh, in stock options. Um, so that was, um, I had to get basically go back to ground level and then start building again. And that's where my focus, again, kind of like got reinforced and um, started um, different businesses. In 2015, really, this is when the technology was there where you, uh, I was not uh, kind of like uh, limited to the San Francisco Bay Area. Now we had like cameras on phones. We had the right. electronic document signing. We had Zillow where I was able to analyze markets, look at properties anywhere in the country. Uh, and that's basically when I went to work. I said, well, you know, now let's find cash flowing properties wherever they are in the States. And then we're going to go and start investing, uh, investing there. And um, that's how we got started. And the idea at the beginning was to build a passive income portfolio for the family. So how did you transition from buying turnkey properties around the, the country to helping other investors buy turnkey properties long distance, you know, in, in these markets all over the US? Mm -hmm. So I did a, a we, I'm an entrepreneur. So I did a lot of businesses in my life. Uh, we had actually in San Francisco, we had a low carb grocery store at one point. We had a gourmet sauce company. We had a catering business. We had a few and a few different other things like electronic cigarettes. I, I couldn't name a few. And um, and people were always, we always kept it interesting for our friends and family, uh, something to talk about. But what's the next venture that they're in? Uh, and right. the first house that we bought was uh, was in Memphis, Tennessee, single family rental. We uh, about, I paid like forty five thousand dollars for it. Put like about ten thousand dollars in rehab and other costs. So I was in for fifty five thousand dollars, and uh, I was able to to refinance it at the end of the project after it was tenanted, and I was able to get all my money back. Plus, like I had an extra five thousand dollars on top of that, uh, so infinite return. I had more money at, at the end of the project than I had at the beginning, and I had a cash flowing asset on top of that. I mean, sign me up. Of course, it doesn't happen like that all the time. It just happened that the first no. one that I did was <laughs> like that, and now it's yeah, just, okay, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, not every deal works out that well, but when when you do have a deal like that where you do get all of your money back and the property is cash yeah. flowing well, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Exactly. So it happened a few times, but I mean, that when you start like that, then I talk to my friends and stuff like that. Guess what? You know, I bought this house and stuff like that. And then that's when it's like, you did what? You bought a house, a rental in Memphis? You paid how much? What? What, what are you talking about? Their, their brain just exploded. When I was, you know, because, you know, it's in San Francisco, you're, I'm dealing with a lot of professionals and, you know, engineers and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, this was this was absolutely nonsensical to them. 
that I was doing something like this. And um, but things were going very well. And a lot of them, they said, well, you know, they were a little bit curious and said, well, can I invest with you? Like, can I, uh, you know, do a joint venture or lend you some money? Because we were really trying to grow this. Uh, we don't do anything small. So when we see something that works, we kind of like double down. Um, and um, so I said, yeah, if you want to lend us some money, we can, you know, we can, or if you want to do a joint venture, we can split the profit and all that kind of stuff. And that's kind of like how things started to get uh, very interesting. And we did Mar so we did Memphis, then we uh, did uh, Cleveland, St. Louis, um, and um, so things were were very going very well, and so well in fact that I said I, I started looking at I, I want more equity, I want more things that I, I want to invest more. I had already maxed out my HELOC on my house, and but I had my house was in San Francisco Bay Area, so it had gained a lot of uh, in equity. And I couldn't really access. There was a big, big pocket of equity that I couldn't access. Um, and um, I kept looking at it, and I said, "Okay, well, I, I could visualize the equity sitting on the couch all day watching TV while I was working, <laughs> working." Right. And I was like, now you're gonna go to work, buddy. And um, so I sold my house, and um, so now my my friends, they were just like. Again, their mind exploded when I tell people that I sold my house to invest in real estate, release all that equity. I was able to rent a house that was better, bigger, uh, at, with nicer view and stuff like that, and nicer location, and uh, for the same amount at, as I was paying for my total cost of ownership for the house that I had. And I didn't have any worries. And I had all that million dollars of equity that now I could release or unleash onto my uh, my portfolio uh, and buy more real estate. And at that time, there was a lot of people that were um, that were interested in and start talking about. Well, can I buy the property when it's done? You know, now they were kind of sold on the cash flow idea, and uh, that's when Martel Turnkey was launched. Um, we were basically doing these flips, buying the, the distressed property, renovating it, renting them out. And then we were selling them as absolute turnkey. We would connect them with the lender, the property manager, all of that was cash flowing from day one. Yeah, you know, it's funny that you talk about blowing your, your friends' minds by selling your house to buy investment properties and, and invest in real estate. Uh, I too rent the the home where I live. Uh, I say that my my wife's work really rents the home that, that I live in. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I haven't I haven't owned the the home where I live in over eight years now. Uh, mm -hmm. But I own a bunch of of you know investment real estate. Yeah, and it, you know, it just it goes to show that the middle class mindset around money. There are a lot of assumptions there, and kind of unquestioning, unthinking uh, assumptions about. What is the the proper way to do things, you know, to manage your money and your investments? And they're not always true. I mean, sometimes, yeah. you know, you have to question some of these these assumptions that people make, you know, that, oh, you know, everybody should own their own home and, you know, everybody should do this, everybody should do that. It's not necessarily true. It's often your money works better for you, works harder for you uh, in other ways. So anyway, I, I, a little no, aside absolutely, there, but I, absolutely. I love that. The American dream is like, uh, it's, it's just, just that a dream. You have to really look at it and question it. And it was not easy to sell my house. I mean, I, I'm a, as, as I said, I'm a mathematician. I created like spreadsheets and stuff like that. And it's like, am I looking at this the wrong way? Like if I do this, I do this, I do this, then I get this and it's like, I can quit my, if I sell my house, I invest it in real estate, I can quit my job tomorrow. I was doing a independent consulting. I can quit my job tomorrow and tell my clients, oh, that's it. I'm, and I'm just stay home and, you know, everything is paid for and I don't have to, to work anymore. You know, and I, I looked at it like it took me a year to convince my wife that I was not, <laughs> I was not crazy. Um, but, uh, you know, so she, she decided, okay, let's do it. Once I found the, another, the other house that we were going to rent that was better than what we had, that was nice view and all of that in the hills and all that kind of stuff, 
then she was sold on the idea. So I said, okay, we'll do it. We'll do it. But so, yeah, so she hasn't, she hasn't, uh, she didn't regret it. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. And I mean, right it's it's hard to zig when everyone else is zagging, right? Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's hard to make that, that mental leap, even yeah. when the math is clear on paper. It's yeah. Hard exactly. to do it emotionally. Exactly. And even today, like I'm still arguing, not arguing, but discussing with people kind of like, and it doesn't make sense for everybody either. I think uh, the, the, the pivot point is around four hundred thousand dollars. So, and it depends on your market, and it depends on all kind of stuff like that. If your house, the house that you're considering to buy, is less than four hundred thousand dollars, it's probably better to buy it. If it's above four hundred and five hundred thousand dollars, you should really look around your market and see if it's cheaper to rent, because you know there's a cost of ownership of the house, but then is the opportunity cost of investing that down payment instead of putting this down payment in the house you you can invest that in single family rental or in uh yeah in real estate do real estate flip yourself you know absolutely yeah so at this point you you're buying turnkey rental properties across the country you, you mentioned uh memphis and a few other markets so how, how did you choose these markets to invest in yeah, so I'm a mathematician, so I do a lot of data. Uh, so business, uh, like Census Bureau, Bureau of Labor Statistics, downloaded the data, uh, looked at also data around, uh, our main criteria was landlord-friendly states. Then we yep. would look at uh, what what areas are, you know, the, where the median house value, the median rent, the median income, all of that what's kind of making sense was kind of close to the one percent rule roughly like pretty it was a broad range like 0.85 to 1.25 we were looking at and um, so that was just kind of like hey here's a here's a flag here that uh, maybe we want to look at you know tennessee area or we want to look at memphis and uh, but it eliminated a lot of other places that the whole state of california was eliminated uh, right, so you don't have to look at anything in there, um, but that's not the, a not a landlord friendly state either. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So that's so that's all these kinds of things, and then um, we also looked at um, the growth rate. Uh, it kind of came as a second thing because we, then we looked at okay, well, if the growth rate is kind of like is very moderate, like less than one percent, then we have a better chance of finding deals there because it's not like there's a, there's a there's enough supply really where we can we can make an offer and it's going to be you know it's we're going to be able to get a deal basically this more in balance as opposed to looking at these uh, exuberant real estate markets where it's very high demand and you know the the developers and the everybody that do the the renovations and stuff like that and the flippers they can't go through these properties fast enough so that's when you see these spikes in um in real estate and then it, we knew we wouldn't be able to find any deals there. Right. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of uh, how we came about these markets. Um, we looked also at crime, uh, crime data that is more focused on the, the area. When we started looking at the neighborhood, that's when we started looking more about the crime data. Uh, just like every city has like areas that have high crime and areas that are low crime or lower crime. So. Sure. You can't you can just look at, oh, this city is, uh, you know, has high crime, so I'm going to stay away from that. No, you, there's still good places in these cities that you can invest. Um, but that, yeah, so that's kind of um, how I went about kind of like identifying the markets and then really is going in the market after that and finding the team of the ground on the ground. So the property, the, the realtor, property manager, so contacted. Uh, hundreds of these uh, of people and uh, trying to build, find people that were uh, realtors that were investor friendly, that yeah. knew what we were talking about, what we were looking for and could recognize an opportunity. Uh, very hard to find. Um, so it's surprisingly hard to find. I know, I know. But a lot of people, they just want to sell a house and uh, like once every 20 years to a customer. But instead of 20 a year with one customer but uh, anyway that's how it but is yeah i mean a lot of them they're not used to looking at the math they, you know they don't understand what investors are looking for so yeah. they don't know how to help investors yeah i mean it, it is hard to find it realtors who 
uh, serve investors well and who know yeah. their needs well. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, so that's kind of uh, how we identified these um, these markets. And as we went through, uh, you know, we hadn't at that point we were doing like uh, you know 25, 30, 40 properties, uh, up to fifty properties a month that we were we were flipping and stuff like that. We had a big team, um, probably like at one point, uh, like 10, 12 people uh, doing these oh, wow. uh, these flips. Uh, different, you know, salespeople, acquisitions people, all that kind of stuff. And then we had more and more investors as were that was coming to that were coming to us, and they say, "Well, I like the turnkey thing. This is great and all that, but it would, I would like to buy the distressed property myself, renovate it, rent it out, and then maybe refinance it, do the burst strategy, or maybe flip it myself, like sell it to uh, to other people." And I said, well, OK, but you, we can help you. That's when we started to do the online training, uh, did mentorship, uh, wrote a book called Stop Trading Your Time for Money, where basically everything is in that book. You read my book, you know everything you need to know to do what I'm doing today. So there's no secret. And um, but people are not doing it. And uh, so even after people had read the book, they went on train, training, one-on-one -on -one mentorship that I did, like spending time on the phone with a spreadsheet and said, this is what you need to do. You need to call these 25 people. You need to do this. You need people are not they're not doing it. They're not doing it. And um, and then we said, like, like, what what do we have to do? To make these people <laughs> successful <laughs> and uh so we went to the drawing board my son and i and then we just like okay what do we need like you know maybe the team on the ground that was a lot of work to to do so maybe we can give them the team on the ground we can we give them a connection a connect them to the realtor the realtor that that we've been using the property manager that we've been using for the last uh, eight ten years and we connect them with them and we're just like wow are we sure we want to do this? Okay, well, and then uh, we're gonna our acquisitions teams. You know, we there's a lot of properties that we can't we don't buy. There's so many properties on the market we can't buy them all. So we're gonna go and say oh, our acquisitions team. Maybe you can find the properties for for our customers for our students, and then that way they're gonna have the property. They're gonna know the, they're gonna know the who's gonna do it the prop, the realtor property manager the contractor on the ground that are gonna be able to look at this and the only thing really they need after that is the lender um, so we're gonna connect them with hard money lenders that we have worked with that actually work with these properties in these markets in these price range because there's a lot of criteria there's a lot of lending lenders have a lot of criteria when they lend to uh, to people so we're gonna sure. you know, we narrowed it down to you know five or six out of hundreds of lenders um so that saves you a lot of time and that's when flip system was born so basically doing the online online training still the coaching but you have the acquisitions team on top of that you have the uh, access to the hard money lender uh, resources or network the team on the ground, realtor, property manager, contractor. Uh, then you have, <clears throat> excuse me. Then all of that is uh, in a property tracking system. So we have a custom application called property tracking system or PTS. And in there, we're going to put properties for you. Everything is analyzed for you. You can obviously change the numbers and adjust and all of that. It uh, it does the, all the analysis for you. Uh, keep track of all the data, the project, and all that kind of stuff. And really, the only thing you have to do then is like push a button and say, OK, I want to I want to I'm interested in buying this property. And then this is when the process begins of putting an offer, talking to your realtor and making sure that's a good deal and going through the due diligence and all that kind of stuff. No, it and, makes, uh, makes total sense. That, there's two more things on top of that. The other thing is you're part of a community. So we have like a actually a discord um, group uh, where if you can talk to other investors that are, you know, that are part of flip system. When I was working full time, you know, when I talk about people, friends, like thinking, blowing their brain about what I was doing, it's tough. It's tough when you're, uh, you work nine to five and you're talking to your colleagues and coworkers 
and then they don't understand what you're doing and they think you're crazy. And, <laughs> uh, so now you're going to be surrounded with other crazy people uh, and then you can talk about your deals. And then finally, um, yeah, we're allowing also our flip system student to sell the uh, property on the uh, on the Martel Turnkey uh, website to list their property there. I'm sorry about the fireworks, but I have something. <laughs> yeah, I was just noticing that. I think I can do this and it does fireworks or something. I don't <laughs> <know>. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, it makes total sense that, you know, for the average person to succeed, you know, it really helps them to plug into an existing system. Uh, there's a saying that I have come to believe that's true, that people don't actually want to learn how to fish, they just want you to hand them the fish. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's that's basically what we found with our online course, uh, which is why we ended up creating our, our co-investing club. Uh, you know, we we were selling this course, and you know, people were they were interested, but what they really just wanted was the deals. They just wanted to be able to yeah. put money into a deal and then go back to living their lives. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it sounds like what you're doing, it's similar concepts you know it's, yeah. it's an people entire system busy. done for people them. are busy you know yeah um so then working nine to five and you know how it is i mean if you have a family too you have to take care of your kids and take them to soccer baseball whatever hockey. absolutely and then you're busy and then you have to where do you want to spend your time at time it's all about time right where where do you want to spend your time and how much money would you spend to kind of get your time and also be able to invest, diversify your investment. I mean, this is where you have to do that, that calculation here. And um, so with Flip System, uh, I mean, you can do both. You can literally spend a couple of hours a week on your real estate investing. And um, you can take it as fast or as slow as you want. And you can still go and watch your kids play, play soccer or swim meet or whatever you have. Oh, it makes total sense. So Eric, where where can people connect with you and, and learn more about what you're doing with both your, your turnkey properties that you're selling and also Flip System? So uh, on social media, I'm, I'm uh, pretty much everywhere around Eric Martel Official. So uh, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, uh, X, uh, Twitter, et cetera. Right. Uh, also on YouTube, so I have a couple of YouTube channel. Uh, you can find them also on Eric Martel Official. Uh, in uh, the other website is martelturnkey.com. So this is where we do the, uh, the turnkey sales uh, for turnkey properties. Uh, there's also a lot of resources in there, like articles and uh, that can explain kind of our process. And uh, the other one is flipsystem.com. This is the other website where with the online co the, uh, the coaching uh, to help you start your real estate investing uh, side, side gig, I would say. Yeah, no, absolutely. Well, Eric, thank you so much for coming on today. I, I love what you guys are doing. And we hope to have you back on the show soon. Absolutely. Thank you, Brian. All right, guys, please, if you enjoy these conversations that we have, rate, review the show, spread the love, share the show with your friends, and we will catch you next Tuesday, same time, same place. Have a great week.